Tonight we're beginning the Gospel of John. You'll see the lessons in a little different format. I felt convicted that I had to do a little more writing, not I'll be so abbreviated. So I took this form here to give me opportunity to say a little more. So I want to end my life doing more, not less. Gospel of John. We're going to be looking at the first three verses tonight. <clears throat> and when it comes to uh, discerning and believing in Christ, we're outside the domain of human experience. We've, we're outside the domain of human aptitude. This cannot be approached just intellectually. You may be able to learn something, but it will have nothing to do with what God's doing. Mm -hmm. In order to, to believe on Christ, a considerable work has to be done. Yes. Yeah. First of all, there's not a shred of evidence that Jesus is. Mm -hmm. yes. uh -huh. That of evidence of, of, of as men count evidence. Uh -huh. There's no evidence. Mm -hmm. The only evidence you got is the testimony. That's that's it. Yep. Amen. You can't. Uh, there's nothing extant or present in the present evil world that can affirm the, his existence. The effectiveness of his life and his death, the reality of his resurrection, the realness of his presence at God's right hand, or the exceeding greatness of the power that is exerted toward them to believe. There is absolutely no evidence, as men count evidence, that these things are. And yet, Eternal life depends on you being convinced of it. Amen. That's right. Your acceptance by God depends on you being convinced of this. You can't turn to apologetics. That'll not do it. There's nothing in the field of apologetics that can prove this. God's got to prove it to you. Amen. Yep. And he's going to do it by means of your faith. Yes. When you're talking about evidence and all that, what that showing is that human effort—it's just—it's not enough. It, yeah. it, it's it's bigger than what our natural senses can comprehend. That's why we have revelation. That's right. I mean, if if there was evidence of these things that we could see, I mean, you'd have to question like why we even need the Word of God in the first yeah. place. He's withdrawn. The, God has withdrawn the evidence. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's withdrawn the evidence. Just like he did in the Ten Commandments. This is the only physical thing that God ever wrote on. Yes, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Tables are so this is the only tangible, mm -hmm. and tangible means you can touch it. Yeah, He's right. the only tangible thing in the history of the world that God ever wrote something on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What did God do? He put it where nobody could see it. Yes. That's what he did with it. This isn't what man would have done with it. No. Oh, no. They would have enshrined it. That's right. They'd have put it under glass at armed guards. He'd go see it. Mm -hmm. Not so with the things of God. Amen. All of these things that I mentioned, they're outside the perimeter of human experience. Yeah. They all have to do with another world. If God had not done something, now this, this is a serious situation, and if God hadn't done something to address this situation, it could never have been resolved. Yeah. I mean, if God can part a Red Sea in front of the eyes of somebody, yeah. and they walk through on dry ground, 
and turn around on the other side and see their enemies washed up on the shore, yeah. and it still didn't convince them. Yeah. That's right. yeah. Yeah, that's right. yeah. uh -huh. If you could receive manna every day in a timely manner uh -huh. for 40 solid years uninterrupted, and you still couldn't believe, I mean, does there really need to be any commentary on this? Doesn't make a difference what God did. If God sent a fireball down from heaven, they'd think it was an asteroid. Yes. In terms of a lot of these demands for evidence are really just excuses. Right. It's a waste of time. Yeah. It's a waste of time. Maybe interesting. Don't, I don't deny that it's interesting, but it's a waste of time. Yeah. Evidence has to be accessed by faith. Now, we know this is true because of God's dealings with Israel. God, God demonstrated this mm -hmm. by his dealings with Israel. He created the nation. Mm -hmm. right? yes. He created that nation. Right. He created that nation. Amen. And he, he made them his exclusive people. Huh? He didn't recognize anybody else. He gave them a specific land. He gave them a specific law. He gave them a specific leader. <laughs> he gave them the, the, the tabernacle service. Worked all kinds of mighty wonders that have, that the magnitude of which have never been worked before or after. Not Jesus nor the apostles worked miracles, the magnitude of those that worked for Israel. Of course, any miracle is a... You understand, any miracle is impossible. Yeah, uh -huh. I'm talking about from the standpoint of vision, That's sight. Right, yeah. He brought an, an entire nation in the aggregate, mm. in the millions, out of 400-year bondage in a single night, yeah. all at the same time, without a dog barking. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He even hewed them by the prophets. We're talking about for centuries, talk about for hundreds of years. See, when you talk about our nation, you can't talk about hundreds of years. What do we know about hundreds of years? For hundreds of years, he hewed them with the prophets. They were still a stiff-necked people that believed not, as Psalm 78, 22 says. So that proves that God can devote himself exclusively to a people, work mighty wonders that could never have been worked any other way, and it not change them one bit. Yes? About the, the manna in this way before, but now we know that it wasn't common to find these little these little scenes yes, right. in the wilderness. Now we're not talking about going someplace and finding a different kind of plant. Mm -hmm. We're talking about being sustained. This was a witness to Israel every single day Amen. for Amen. 40 years. Mm -hmm. Every single day. It, it, got, it was like the voice of God coming again. I am your God that provides. Mm -hmm. I am your God. I, I'm with you. Mm -hmm. I am your God. I'll bring it to pass. Just it, it, if they had thought on it, it was such an amazing thing. I mean, nobody, you don't hear of manna anywhere else. It was a special food that God provided uh -huh. consistently and and faithfully. I mean, it, they, what do they call it? What is it? What is it? They didn't even <laughs> know what it was, but it sustained them. And you don't hear about anybody else living in the wilderness and being sustained by some some uh, strange strange food that come mm -hmm. appears in the dew. It just it doesn't happen. People that go in the desert and stay that long just die. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Do you know that? Now that proves that God can work, and you can think about it because they thought about it. What is it? What is it that, that was asked after they thought about it? Uh -huh. What is it? Now, when you witness to people, you got to keep this in mind. You got to keep this in mind. 
that God, you got to give them words God can work with. There's no hope you can talk somebody into really believing. No, this is not so. You've got only the Holy Spirit can convict men, but you've got to give them something. You've got to give the Spirit something to work with. That's testifying of the truth. Now, that's how it was with Israel. But now we are in a new and a living, new and a better covenant. This is a covenant that's been preceded by sin being taken away. Satan's been soundly defeated. Wicked principalities and powers have been disgraced publicly. Heaven's been opened. A way to God has been blazed. We have a message who, that, unlike the law, has power. The gospel is not a power. It's the Amen. power of God. The gospel with God is like a sword in his hand. The gospel cuts two ways. It reveals those who love the light. It reveals those who hate the white. Yes. Uh -huh. It reveals what soil's good and what soil's bad. Uh -huh. What soil's productive, what soil is not productive. And the gospel, the power that's in the gospel is necessary if men are to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Now the gospel of John is precisely that, the gospel of John. It's the gospel broken down. Uh -huh. The details of provision uh -huh. are broken down. Yes. Uh, John's not going to tell you why Jesus died. John's not going to tell you what he's doing in heaven. Uh -huh. That's not what he's going to tell you. Yeah. He's going to introduce you to what God manifest in the flesh does. Yeah. Uh -huh. What yeah. someone sent from heaven, mm -hmm. what they're sent to do, mm -hmm. and what they do. He wrote this gospel, we understand, to Jews, and he's going to speak to them in terms they can understand. The modern church, they don't want to understand it. They're not going to understand what he's talking about. But the Jews will. Who Jesus really is, and how to appropriate the benefits he really gives, that's his target. He tells you what his target is. His target is that you will believe on the name of the Son of God. That's the target he has. You say, well, I've already done that. You have not done that enough. Yeah, amen. You're not as expert in believing as you may think. Yeah, yeah. At the very best, you're still at the threshold. Yeah. See, that's why this gospel is necessary. Amen. So it's intended to introduce us to the author and finisher of our faith. He'll tell us how Jesus talks to people that don't believe. He'll tell us how Jesus talks to people who do believe. He'll tell us how Jesus talks to those enslaved to tradition. He'll tell us how Jesus talks to seekers. It'll all be revealed in this, in this gospel. Now let's look at the, we're going to look at the first three verses. Which this will just, uh, this will be a cursory introduction, you understand. There's a lot more here, but. In the beginning, that's the way the Bible starts. That's the same words the Bible starts with. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. So the theme of this book is Christ. Amen. Its aim is not to convince men what they ought to do. Yes. That's not the aim of this book. It's not to teach you how to resolve your problems. That's not, that's not what this book is about now. It's not to present a novel approach to the humanity of Christ, to kind of bring it down so we all appreciate him a little bit more. It's, you will focus on things Jesus did that could not have been done by anyone else. Yeah, 
You've got to see Jesus like this. If, if it's something somebody else can do, that's not what you need to know about Jesus. He specializes in what can't be done by anyone else. Now, there's, see, there's an amazing amount of church work that it, uh, a bunch of different people could do. You don't even have to be a Christian to do a lot of what churches do. Am I right? But this isn't how Jesus works. Until Jesus is seen in this manner, he's doing what could not otherwise be done. Men will not believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's got to be seen. As long as it can he do this, is it possible for him to do that? That person won't believe. Well, there isn't anything to really believe. John doesn't write... So we'll believe Jesus is just like us. Yeah, that's, right. uh -huh. that's not why John writes. Or to accent his human likeness to us, so to speak. He was made like unto his brethren. Now that's, that's for sure. Yeah, uh -huh. He was made like unto his brethren. Go ahead, Brother Jason. Yeah, I was just thinking that one of the, one of the theological themes that John's going to develop here is that in order for mankind to have access to eternal life, several things had to happen. One, somebody from heaven had to come down. <laughs> Two, they had to lay down their life and take it up again. Amen. Three, they had to go back into heaven. Amen. Yeah. Now, none of us, I'll start with the first one, come from heaven. Well, that rules everybody yeah, out. That's right. None of us could have accomplished yeah. that because we were never in heaven in the first place. Yeah. Uh -huh. If we're saved, if men think we're saved by works, I dedicate this to everybody who corrupt James. Yeah. Uh -huh. Saved by works. There's a couple of things that have to be done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Who will ascend into heaven? Yeah. That is to bring him down. Yeah. Right? That, uh -huh. If you're saved by works, you got to do that. you got to do that. Now. Uh -huh. Work number two, or who can bring him up? <laughs> from the dead. So those are two things that have to be done. Yeah. Jesus has to be brought down uh -huh. and Jesus has to be brought up from the region of the dead. Uh -huh. And if man can't do that, yeah. just stop talking about their works. Because yeah. those are two works that have to be done. Yeah. Now as I was saying, Jesus uh, was made like unto his brethren. Yeah. But the likeness was not in order to soothe our minds or make him more precious to us. Mm -hmm. He was made like unto his brethren so he could die. Amen. That's right. And Jesus is not just like us. That's right. Amen. That's a wrong, see, that's a wrong assessment to begin with. He was made like us, but not just like us. He has always been separate from sinners. That's not just like us. Okay, but he is tempted just like us, but in all points. The points being the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You've never been tempted to turn a stone into a piece of bread, have you? Have you? Have you? Has anyone ever been tempted? See, he had a different level of temptation. You've never been tempted to do something and gain all the kingdoms of the world. No. Jump, off the Jump off a pinnacle of a temple. See, the, Satan tempts you to like for the pleasures of sin for a season, uh -huh. yeah, right. a lustful moment to be. Mm -hmm. Nothing like Jesus was tempted. Amen. But he's not. He's not just like us. I say that because uh, of recent, mm -hmm. we encountered some people were saying this. So here's what he says. In the beginning was the Word. The beginning. <laughs> now some versions read, before everything existed. Mm -hmm. Living Bible. The basic Bible, English says, from the first. Or in the beginning, before time, the Amplified says. Or this is the beginning, this is the beginning, this is my word, this is the beginning that's mentioned in Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. That's the beginning he's talking about. Yeah, yeah, amen. In the beginning. Yeah. 
John takes us to the proper beginning point yeah. for godly thinking. Now, the Mormons, who in recent years were popularized by a presidential candidate who some people said was a Christian, <laughs> well, yeah, they did. Yeah. Well, let me give you some of the Mormon belief here. This is a quote from their literature. Mm -hmm. We were first begotten of spirit babies in heaven and then born naturally on earth. That's their teaching now. There's a library. Here it is again, from the Purpose of Life, from Brigham Young University. In your life before birth, before the earth was created, God presented children to a, who accepted his plan were given the opportunity to live on earth. Those who rejected his plan were not privileged to enter mortality. That's Mormon teaching. There it is. So are you, are you kindly disposed to... Mormons, are you? That's their teaching. Yeah. Given the privilege to enter mortality. <laughs> huh? Yeah. Can you imagine being in heaven and being asked to enter mortality? Praise the Lord. Now, how does the whole, how does John address? In the beginning was the Word, not war of the spirits. That's right. That's right. Was the Word. The proper consideration of both man and the Lord Jesus begins at the creation. You begin, there's where God made known what he was doing. You have very sparse information about before that. And the only information you have is what God divulged to you and it's very, uh, very, very sparse. The fact that God was declaring something or someone that existed before time, the fact that he says this means it's relevant. Amen. Yeah. Right. God wouldn't say this if this wasn't important now. Amen. This is done out of God's consideration of us mortals. In the beginning was the Word. When things started here, things, the one I, the word, he already was. Yes. He didn't begin then. Yeah, amen. In fact, he had no beginning of days, as scripture says. Whatever was in existence at the beginning mm -hmm. is not affected by time. Yeah, amen. Because <clears throat> mm -hmm. the beginning was the beginning of time. There yes. wasn't any time mm -hmm. before the beginning. Remember this light says the heavens were established for times and for seasons and for years. And uh -huh. So time didn't exist before then. And what did exist before then cannot be impacted or influenced by what took place in time. Yes. Amen. Now God, the fact that he made this known, as I said, means it's relevant or it, pertain, it pertains to us now. This is... This is a fact mm -hmm. that we've got to know. Yeah. There's no other reason, actually, for God making it known. And see, it's just that before the beginning mm -hmm. is beyond beyond us. You do not have the ability mm -hmm. to consider something before mm -hmm. time. You just have imaginations, but then imagine what was. But you, unless God says something about yeah, what yeah. was then, mm -hmm. you don't know anything at all. And He doesn't reveal really reveal a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just what's pertinent for you to know. It's not in any way impacted by human thought. Mm -hmm. Whatever's there, see. Mm -hmm. Whatever was in the beginning, is the, it was already before the beginning. Yeah, amen. It can't be changed or altered or touched by human thought or anything else. It means that circumstance can't alter that. Something occurring in time could not be the cause for a divine decision that occurred then. That means the foreknowledge doesn't mean he saw what men would do. That was in, that was in time. 
You can't change anything, any personality that existed before time. You cannot be changed by something in time. That includes the cherubim and the seraphim and the living creatures, the holy angels, God himself, the word, and even Satan and his hosts. By speaking of one person or even one determination that existed before time that was in existed in the beginning, this opens the door to consider such things as eternal purpose, yes, uh -huh. predestination, yes. election, mm -hmm. foreknowledge. Mm -hmm. See, all that took place yes. before time. Amen. So this opens the door for In the beginning was the word, all right? Now, yeah. now I can understand about mm -hmm. thoughts that were developed by God. Well, yeah. that's the wrong word, developed. Thoughts were, were part of God before the creation. Amen. That's yeah. because Jesus was, <coughs> the purpose was, yes. the predestination was, mm -hmm. yes. the election was, yes. <laughs> the foreknowledge was. Yeah. Now, in the beginning was the Word. Other versions say, there was Christ. That's the Living Bible. That's, that's not what it says. It was the same person, but that's not what it says. The one who is called the Word, contemporaneous Bible. God expressed himself. That's Philip's. The Word was first. The Word present to God, present to the Word. God present to the Word. That's the message, whatever that means. And the word in parentheses is Christ. <clears throat> See, some people, well, they're so academic, they don't know anything. Now, the comparison with Genesis 1 should be very apparent to you right, up, right away. Genesis says, in the beginning, God created. John says, in the beginning, was. <laughs> Isn't that, that good? In the beginning, God created. Just in the beginning was the word. He wasn't created. Yeah, that's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Now you're not going to get much help on the word from a Greek lexicon. See the official meaning of the word translated word, which is logos, and if you're in certain circles, this is like almost you think this is like a holy word, logos. Did you say it heavily? It, but actually, the word means speech. A voice, a word uttered by a living voice. But <laughs> that doesn't exactly saturate the meaning here. The, there isn't, there isn't a, a word in a, a human language that says what this is saying here. So you can just kind of grope around if you're looking like for, from a standpoint of a, of a definition. The focus thought is more on expression than saying. In the beginning was the word. See, there's no closer association than in an object with the word, this word. If you say apple, the closest association with an apple is the word apple. See, the, that the word and the substance are as close together as you can get. Uh -huh. Amen. Same with people. Person of Abraham and the name Abraham, see there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. The word here is, God, is the expression of God, it, it, it's, but it's a person, it's not a theory, it's a, it's a person yeah. as is demonstrated hmm. later in the book, he, he didn't prove this to you, he says the word became flesh and the word dwelt among us. Uh -huh. So he's it's, it's talking about the one that was known as Christ. We understand that this, of course, to mean Jesus is the one through whom God speaks. That's how that's that's the point he's making here. He's not really giving us a lesson on existence. That's 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 not the point he's making. He's trying to make the point, or he's making the point, of who God's talking through now. See, and this, of course, is stated in actual words in Hebrews one. 
God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in tithes past unto the fathers by the prophets, uh -huh. hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he, he made the worlds. So by saying in the beginning was the Word, John is preparing us for a proper view of Christ. Amen. Yes, Brother Jason. He's not just saying, he, he's not, he is saying this, but he's saying more. He's not just saying God created the world through Jesus. That's right. He is saying that. But yes. what he's actually saying is why God created the world. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. Jesus is why yeah. God Amen. created the world. There's a yeah. theological purpose for uh -huh. the creation of the world. Amen. 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 The evolutionist in his theories never takes the word into consideration. Gee, they study the creation uh -huh. with neither God nor the Word yeah. in mind. Yeah. So how can they possibly say anything that's right? Yeah, that's right. Amen. Amen. And that theistic evolution which says that God did create the world but he created it by a process of evolution, they went to the same school the raw, the the raw evolutionists went to. It's a mm -hmm. school in which God doesn't teach. Their education is, was, is an education God wasn't in. Uh -huh. yeah. So they think they straddle a fence. They're able to be religious. God made it. But they have to bow the knee to Baal. But he made it through evolution. But here he's telling you, in the beginning was the word. We're not talking about the process. He's going to come into this matter of creation. He's not talking about the process, a process. He's talking about a reason and a person through whom God speaks. The beginning of John 1 was the launching of Project Humanity. God's so great salvation. So in the beginning, so we start with the creation. The word was at that time. The new creation. That's right. That's, That's right. What I have here. Mm -hmm. I've always been astounded that that it, it was just like Genesis 1, like you said, but, and it begins with Jesus Christ, but now Jesus yes, being God and man marks the beginning of this life being given to man. That's right. New life. That's mm -hmm. right. The new creation, yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Now in the beginning was the word and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. I'm used, you could muse on that for a while. Yeah, That's like not a simple sentence. The same. <laughs> He's talking about a person. Yeah. The same was in the beginning with God. Yeah. Other versions read, He was in the beginning. This Word was from the first in relation to God. God's Word Bible says he was already with God. He existed in the beginning, New Living Translation. Williams Bible says he's the one who was face to face with God in the beginning. Message Bible says in readiness for God from day one, whatever that means. He was present originally with God. Amplify. But I still like it the way it says, the Word was with God, not He. Not he. Uh -huh. The word was with God, and yeah. the word was God. Amen. This is what the Savior was before he entered into the world. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now there was a distinction in the persons of the Father and the Word. They they, they were distinct, mm -hmm. but their character and will was not distinct. We're not distinct, see? Their persons were unique and separate, mm -hmm. but their purpose and will yeah. was reunited. Amen. They were unique persons, but they were divine, sovereign, and immutable. Yeah. You must think of God, the word God in the Hebrew and the Greek is a plural word. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's a plural word. So. We would think of it as family. God, Godhead, 
that family is not a thorough word, but it's about the closest thing you can come to. They were together in both nature and purpose. That's why he said in, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. Doesn't mean they were the same persons. Means they were the same character, same character, the same individual, the same traits, same purpose. They were perfectly united. There was no variance between them at all. The only difference was how they how they were to function. Yeah, yeah, amen. <coughs> yeah, really given, this is, this is a you know, in the garden there where Jesus was asking, is there any other way? He wasn't saying, I'm not doing this. He was he he had the same purpose. He he wanted the same objective. Yeah. But but what he was asking was is there any other way to get this done? Of course, he already knew the answer. I, I believe he knew the answer. He was he was going through this time of, of, of struggling, but it's still he exposed and he, every prayer he prayed he says, If thou be willing. Yeah. He he wasn't it wasn't in contradiction with God, even though he was going through the worst as a worst. A worst. Yeah, he he wasn't thinking. I know. I know the wilderness has to be done. This isn't how he was thinking. See, he he didn't. Yes, he technically he knew this had to be done. That's why he came. But this isn't how he's thinking when he prays. He's not thinking. But I know it has. He's not thinking that way. He's thinking I'm going to have to be soiled by sin. That's right. That's how he's thinking. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an intellectual. Thing at all. They were together in ancient purpose. Now the the word was not a creation, but the means of the Father's expression, particularly as regards men, which is what what John's going to. He said that you may believe. See, so he's going to focus on God and man that association. Now this. Uh, this is why we read expressions like this early on in Scripture. Genesis 126, let us, he that says the word was in the beginning, he was with God and was God. So that's what, let us make man, behold a man has become, a, is one of us, verse 322, let us go down and confound the language. I heard, I, Isaiah saw a vision of Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. And the voice of the Lord said, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? <laughs> As the word was with God. Yeah. And the word was, Amen. was God. Both are eternal. Mm -hmm. Both are omnipotent. Both are omniscient. Both are omnipresent. Yet in redemption, we are brought to acknowledge the mystery, the mystery of mm -hmm. God and of the Father, and of Christ. Amen. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's a mystery. We admit that's a mystery. Yeah. Can we can we figure it all out and tell it to you in intellectually acceptable words? No. But we acknowledge. We acknowledge. Yeah. What is mysterious, by faith we see, we acknowledge. I see the mystery of the God. Yeah. Father seems to, doesn't seem to blend with God. See? Christ, that, but we acknowledge that mystery. The John is establishing at the very first of his gospel that the God of Scripture and the Lord Jesus Christ with whom we are now acquainted have always been together. Oh, that's marvelous. For us, nothing can be received that does not come from God through Christ, according to the will of the Father. And nothing can go from us to God except through Christ, according to the will of God and the Father. Whatever we think of Jesus is an index to what we think of God. However we respond to the word of Christ, that's the way you respond to the Word of God. Yes. That's why Jesus could say things like this. He that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. Mm -hmm. Whosoever shall receive me, receiveth not me, but him that sent me. Mm -hmm. He that despiseth me, despiseth him that sent me. 
<laughs> Jesus referred to him that sent me 15 times. Him that sent me. There was no variance in purpose, will. He, he were perfectly, in the beginning was the Word. The Word is with God. The Word was God. When the Word is made flesh, He came down, but He didn't lose this unanimity with God. Yes. Later in the book of John, in chapter 10, when He's speaking of Him Himself being the door to the sheepfold, the Good Shepherd, in verse 29, it says, My Father which gave them to me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. But then he adds, I and my Father are one. Are one. Mm -hmm. And that that can't can't be stated any more clearly than that, I don't think. I and my Father are one. That just disperses any doubt of the matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one, that's not a number one. That's a unity one. It's a unity one, not a number one. See, the Jesus only people... <laughs> they went to the wrong school. I'm sorry, they just went to the wrong school. They had the wrong teachers. They couldn't possibly be more wrong. There's only one person in the Godhead. There isn't a Godhead unless there's more persons than one. Uh, that Christ said, you've got to remember that there's no lying or deceit or deception in Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. And Amen. Uh, remember when he told his disciples that uh, there would be a time when they wouldn't ask him anymore. Mm -hmm. They would ask the Father in his name. That's right. That's right. Now, whenever Jesus prayed, O oh, righteous Father, he wasn't pretending to pray to somebody beside himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, if if you think that, then you you really don't know the first thing about God. Amen. He cannot lie. That's one of the two immutable things that we yes. know. Amen. God who cannot lie, and that would be a lie. Mm -hmm. See, a, a lie can be like exaggeration, uh -huh. understatement. Yeah. See, that's a lie too. Now, Jesus referred to being with the Father prior to his entrance into the world. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And he now he referred, while he's on earth, he referred to this, yes. what this text is talking about. For instance, he said he came down from heaven. No man hath ascended up into heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. See? His heart didn't come down. <laughs> For I came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. John 6, 38. Again, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. John 6, 51. John the Baptist said of Jesus, He that cometh from above is above all. Jesus referred to himself as the two bread from heaven. Again, he said, the bread of God is he that which cometh down from heaven and giveth life to the world. And again, this is the bread which came down from heaven. Not as your fathers did eat man and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. He came down from heaven. See, that was when he was in the beginning. Was the words with God, the word was God. He refers. I don't think a lot of people think about this enough. That he came down from heaven. You're looking forward to going to heaven. Yeah. Uh -huh. Jesus came down from heaven. Yeah. And you, uh -huh. Who is able to grasp what that involved? Coming down from heaven. So tonight, you may be lifted up in the spirit. We trust that you will be lifted up in the spirit. And in the morning, you come down. How do you feel when you do? Huh? How do you feel when you come down? How do you feel when you come down? Is it good? You seek a coming down experience? Well, can you imagine how Jesus felt when he came down? He was in the beginning with God and was God, and he came down from heaven. Now, he, that, that's what salvation involved, see? This means our thoughts concerning Christ must be within the circumference must not be within the circumference of our lives. Yeah, that's right. 
Your life can't be the pivot on which your considerations of God are suspended. The fact that he came down, you've got to think of him as that. He came down. I don't want him to have come down in vain so far as I'm concerned. Huh? Amen. I'm going to lay hold of what he came down to do. See, you've got to think of Christ in that, in that context. Jesus referred to being with the Father before he was on earth. I don't think any mortal is capable of comprehending how fervently Jesus longed to be back with God. I mean, life in this world, he was merciful, he was considerate, but from another point of view, it was a burden for him to live in the world. A world was governed by Satan, God of the world. Let's see what he had to say. Sometimes he spent all night in prayer. I give some things. You go up on a mountain, pray all night. What do you think that was all about? He wasn't, oh, help me to do a good job tomorrow. Grant me, grant me power to do this tomorrow. This was this. He wanted to be with the Father. Amen. It was hard for him to spend time, concentrated time with the Father, with the multitudes hanging on, hanging around him all the time. So he's separate, get away from, had to get up on a mountain. I imagine it was a mountain hard to climb. Got up, they had to spend time with God because he longed to be with God. See, he wanted to be with God. Uh -huh. He came down from heaven, but he didn't forget heaven. Right. Amen. Here I'm praying, Gethsemane. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self. Now that's something to think about right there. Glorify me with thine own self. With, with, with thine own self. If God will ever get in a person, that's how the glory, <laughs> that's how your light shines. Glorify me with thine own self, with the glory, with the glory I had with thee before the world was. Oh, see, we don't know what was on that side, but Jesus knew. That glory I had with you before the world was, that's, I want that again, I want that again. Let's hear him express it again. Verse 24. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory which thou givest unto me, hath given unto me. Thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. We were close. <laughs> I wasn't sweating any drops of blood back then. I wasn't grieved with the multitudes back then. Not then, Father. We weren't beholding things on the earth back then. I longed to be back there. Now see, if you've ever been given to a taste of the powers of the world to come, believe me when I tell you, you'll want to be there. Amen. You'll do anything yeah. to be there. Amen. Doesn't make any difference what God asks you to do, you'll do it because you want to be there. When the Lord spent three days in the region of the dead, can you imagine? Can you imagine? If the world was a burden, can you imagine what it was like for the prince of life to be in the region of the dead? But he held on to hope. His hope. Amen. He had hope when he was in the, when his body's in the grave and his spirit was in Hades. He had hope. Here's what he said. Peter quoted it. From the Psalms, thou wilt not leave my soul in hell. Hell, there being a generic word in the old English, it was that way that meant for the unseen abode of the dead, some punished, some not punished. Thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither shalt thy, thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption, which is the grave. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life, thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. You're going to smile on me again. I'm coming out of this region. While he was there, he was, he was productive while he was there. Yes. He even preached to the spirits that were sometimes disobedient in the days of Noah. He, Peter says he preached the gospel to them that are dead. Yes. Not were dead, are dead. He preached the gospel to them that are dead. But see what I'm showing is that the recollection of what, what he was 
with the with God that sustained him even while he's in the grave. Then John adds. All things are made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. Now remember, J John is identifying Jesus to his readers. Mm -hmm. Particular, Jesus of Nazareth. There were other people named Jesus. But Jesus of Nazareth, that one. He's identifying who he was. He came from heaven, and he's now in heaven. Forty-three times, John refers to Jesus as Son. He called him the only begotten Son, the Son of God, the Son of Man, His Son, the Son, the Son of the living God, Thy Son, see? From Genesis to Malachi, there were very few references to the Messiah as Son. There were some. But they were all kind of ambiguous. They were hard to understand. Psalm 2, 7 and 12 refer to him as son. Refer to the Messiah as son. Isaiah 9, 6, unto us is given a son. Daniel 7, 13, he saw the son of man coming to the father, coming to the God sitting upon the throne. But see, though all those texts, there's a certain ambiguity in the text. So much so that the Jews never made the connection of the Messiah being son mm -hmm. or expression, like, like word. In fact, when he said he was a son of God, they objected, saying this was blasphemy. Yes. John 5.18. making a with God. That's right. That's, that's right. <laughs> Which was the exact case, but they thought it was blasphemy. Uh -huh. So John's approach is of special significance. He takes, a funda he takes a fundamental reality that no believer questions. The creation, no Jewish believer questions. The creations. He, takes, he starts with something. Every one of those Jews accepted this. The creation. So he starts right there, and he'll establish that it was accomplished by the one who was made flesh and built among them. He's going to prove to them that the very one they rejected is the one that created the worlds. Boy, is that powerful. All things are made by him. This includes seen things, unseen things, Persons, things that are impersonal, all created things owe their origin to he who was the Word. He was the Word. He appeared as Jesus of Nazareth on earth, and now he's exalted at the right hand of God. When these things that were created are seen or in any way sensed, they are to remind us of the man, Christ Jesus. Every time you look at creation, you don't thank God for the beautiful flowers. I mean, it's not that that's wrong, understand. It's just that it's a little too juvenile for people of God to be praising God for the pretty clouds and the trees and the hummingbirds. And that's nice, but that's, that's you got to get higher up than that if you want any fellowship with God. You don't have to be a Christian to see that. Understand, I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it, it's too babyfied for you. Something like a lollipop. See, by virtue of their creator, virtue of the fact that Jesus is their creator, they owe their existence to him. He manages it. Whatever God creates, he manages Amen. Whatever Jesus creates, he manages. He uses the creation to execute his will. Sometimes he uses uh, the things he made, created things, to overthrow enemies. Send some hailstones down, send some water down, create a flood. He uses the things that were made, 
snakes do things that are made for, to punish his enemies. Yes, right. Sometimes he uses things that are made to sustain his people. Mm -hmm. Ravens bring bread, and ravens bring meat, and see? Because he's the one that created bread and fish, yes. he could multiply them and feed a multitude of people. He wasn't like some superpower, did, did he? was the creator. That's right. See, whatever God creates, he, he manages, uh -huh. controls. In Scripture, much is made of Jesus being the creator. And this has got to be stuffed down the throat of the evolutionists. Now, you can't be polite about this because evolutionists are fundamentally stupid. They are fundamentally stupid. They're intellectually inferior. Yeah, I don't believe that. Well, how do you account for them swallowing such an absurdity then? In any other field, we say they didn't have much sense. Here's what the scriptures say about Jesus before the world was making the world creating. The world he was in the world and the world was made by him. John 1 10. First Corinthians 8 6. One Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Ephesians 3 9. God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Colossians 1 13, his dear son, for by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist or are held, or held together. Things don't spin out of control. Amen. His son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. He was one too. But under the sun he saith, Thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens of the work of thy hands. Hebrews 1, 8 through 10. See, so it's a lot's made out of Jesus creating everything and this, the scope of creation. It was made by the word who became flesh. It, it stretches the mind. It's, I, just, I just list 12 things here that were created part of the creation, the world, things in heaven, that's, that's the yeah. starry heaven, mm -hmm. things on earth, visible things, invisible things, thrones, thrones, these are unseen, see, yeah. thrones, dominions, Michael's got a dominion, that's right. Satan has a dominion, uh -huh. see? dominions, Principalities, he's a spiritual horse. Good and evil. Powers, the world, the foundation of the earth, the heavens. That's what Jesus created. He can manage all these things. He does manage all these things. You having trouble with the devil? Huh? You having trouble with the devil? Satan manages the devil. He can say, stop. Don't touch him. Hmm? He can do that. Things of the things of the world, like weighing you down, the son can manage it. Take it to him. Those who theorize about creation see they're dealing with Jesus. For all things are made by him and for him. Yes. He didn't make the creation to be diagnosed. It may be interesting. I don't, I don't question that it is. That's not why it's made. It's made for him. It's to be used for him. You take the things that were created and you use them for him. They're made for him. They'll be used in his service as opposed to being for man's enjoyment and to fulfill his lusts. Generally speaking, it's, it's revealed that God's eternal power and Godhead are clearly seen in the things that are made. Now, nobody saw it, but it wasn't because it couldn't be seen. 
Other versions, that's Romans 1.20. Other versions read eternal power and divine nature. Eternal power and deity. Deity, divine power, we, another word for this would be sovereignty. Yeah. That there is no place that's not under, under him. Things belong to the Son of God as well as God himself. His, his eternal power unfolds the power of his word. Mm -hmm. See, his eternal power unfolds the power mm -hmm. of his word. That what he speaks causes things to happen. Amen. Right. Now, if you read through the Psalms, uh -huh. you'll find frequently David would, or one of them will say, Speak, mm -hmm. Lord. Yeah. Just speak. Just speak to this. Just speak to this circumstance. Just speak. It's Godhead. See all power. It means that the. It reveals the power of His will. That there's the power of His word. Is the power of His will. That whatever He wants to do, He does. That's the power of His will. That's made known. See His eternal power. And Godhead. So if you can get in line with God's will, all things are possible mm -hmm. to him that believes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if, if moving a mountain is within the circumference of God's will, if that really is what he wants done, then all you have to do is speak to the mountain. Mm -hmm. yeah. You say, well, that'll never happen. Well, as Jesus said that. Amen. What Jesus said was, don't think of what can't be done. Think of what can be done. Amen. Now, none of us are going to go out and try and move a mountain, I don't think. But there may come a time when maybe one needs to be moved. Uh -huh. But what he's saying, see, what he's saying is, I've got power. Yeah. Amen. I've always had power. Uh -huh. When I came down from heaven, when I humbled myself, I had power. Yeah. Hmm? Yes. You could only imagine now that all power would give him in heaven and earth. See, the church had but got to be brought to the trust in Christ. Amen. To actually believe that he is what he's declared to be. Yes. Uh -huh. The church is flip-flopping around the professed church and going here and going there and seeking solutions here and there and being cast down because this can't happen and that can't happen. When all the while, here's the word has been exalted and still he still is the word of God. He's got a name written on his thigh, Word of God. That's right. That's what he is. His he can perceive, he can cause life to spring forth. We've been praying for certain people tonight. They'd be able to see and understand. Ezekiel sixteen six, God said, I saw you in your blood and I said, I said, this is what I said. Live and they did. Yes. Live. He has power to say that. He has power to, he has power over obscurity. Darkness covered the face of the earth. That's obscurity, see? He dissipated the darkness. He has power over chaos. The earth is without form and void. <laughs> With his word, he just spoke chaos away. It's possible, it's possible for you to be in a kind of a chaotic state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've experienced that just kind of recently. Just agitated and mm -hmm. in a sense confused and irritated. Jesus can speak peace. Amen. That's right. He can now. He can speak peace. Mm -hmm. Peace. Yeah. Be still. That's an ocean or a heart. He can do it. Yeah. And he can talk to emptiness. Uh -huh. The earth was without form and void. Yeah. Yeah. And he filled it up with life. <laughs> yes. Why? Because he has power. He has power. Mm -hmm. And God had. And instead of Jesus, he was with God and was God. So he's got, he's got all, that, yes, amen. all that power. Right now, all the power, God's given him all this power for the project humanity. Yes. Amen. See? For the salvation of men, there isn't anything that's, quote, impossible mm -hmm. with God. And if you're in sync with him, 
It's, uh, not, it's possible with you. You'll have whatever you say ask. That's what, Jesus, that's what the scriptures say. He can summon things into being. He can bring them into being. He just says, let there be. Yeah. There it is. Amen. Maybe you've been looking for like an opportunity to do this or this or that. And you can't find it. So why not take the matter to God? Why, why not? Yeah. Why not ask him to say, let there be an opportunity yes. for brother or sister so and so. It, Amen. Well, the scripture would call it an open door. Yeah. That would be the scriptural, <laughs> that's the scriptural term for an yes. opportunity is an open door. Mm -hmm. He can like, he told the church at Philadelphia, I'm going to open the door for you yeah. that nobody can shut. But without him, John asks, without him was not anything made that was made. So nothing popped into existence automatically. Yeah. There wasn't a phase of creation where you reach a certain stage that it just automatically started yeah. happening. There's no such thing as anything being disassociated from Christ. Amen. Okay? All things are connected with him. He has authority over it all to use it for blessing or cursing, for building up or tearing down. Now, take what we've talked about and transfer it over into the kingdom of God's dear Son into which you've been translated. What is required of you that's not possible in Christ? Nothing. Amen. Whatever God requires is possible in Christ because even in the beginning he was with God and was God and now he's been exalted and given all power in heaven and earth mm -hmm. and so if God says do this, be this, go here, stay here and you sense this is going to be very difficult You've got Christ, Amen. who's ahead over all things. What possible reason, what possible reason could you give for not living for Christ? Well, I think I'll, Amen. I conclude there, but it's a lot there to be considered, isn't there? <laughs> all right, you all were pretty quiet during that. Any of you have something you'd like to say? Yes, yeah, Sister Ada. We come to this thought that uh, the profundity of Christ's oneness with the Father, even while he was in human body, and that this is one aspect of him going before us, that even though we are not physically present with the Father, because Christ indwells us, That's right. we have oneness with the Father. That's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah, John called it fellowship with the Father and with the Son. Amen. That's absolutely right. Yes, with Judah. In the beginning was the word, but that's not the only time he was, because he still is today and still will be. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. We have to be confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in us will perform it. And so, in the beginning was the word, today he is the word, and he will be the word through the end of time. Mm -hmm. And our trust in him is, um, I'm trying to think of the word. I can't think of it now. You have to have it, though. If you if you don't, if, if it only it only makes sense to trust in something that never changes, that never moves, that's always there. So to, just to trust something shifty is just not wise. It's dangerous because if you have your trust there, then it'll move and you'll fall. But trusting in the Word, He was there in the beginning, still is, still will be. You can't lose like that. Let's mm. put it this way. <clears throat> For anything to be practical or helpful in your life in Christ, it has to have been before the world was. 
If what you're seeking help from had a genesis in this world, it can't contribute to your salvation or your faith or your strength. To be truly profitable, it has to be, have been in place before the world was. If it's a purpose, the purpose had to be in place before the world was. If it's a person, the person had to be in place before the world was. Yes, Brother Tony. It's for, necessary for the, the apostle to establish that this this one, mm -hmm. Jesus. Now he 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 predated the world That's existence right. and all that. He needed to get that before he could get anything That's said. Right. He needed to establish that fact. But we're talking mm -hmm. about someone who who existed before everything, who is outside mm -hmm. of this world, who's who has come in. Amen. 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 Jesus and. <clears throat> Leave glory uh, reluctantly or begrudgingly, and he, and he didn't. Yes, right. But on the other side of the coin, he didn't do it as a well. No one else is here. No one else can do it. I guess I'll go. Or, but or you know, when you uh, mentioned it, he referred to um, him who sent me. And he wasn't a well, God sent me, so that's why he came. He came. Yeah. Because he saw that God was going to be justified right. in his coming. That's right. Mm. Lo, I come to do thy will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's mm -hmm. eager. The same thing's going to happen in the end, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, the scroll is open. It's like, there's none who's worthy. Who's the one who's worthy? There he is. There's Amen. the lamb. Mm. Sister Cindy. When you had said... Um, don't think about what you can't, what can't be done. Think about what can be done. Mm -hmm. I thought back in the garden when the Lord told him not to eat that one tree. I thought, don't think about the one tree you can't eat. I think about all the rest of them. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Sister Melissa. Um, I was thinking about this this morning about how how we can't even comprehend really what Jesus did give up to come to to that's earth. Right. How he humbled himself, and so. How can we? How can we even think that count our life as anything to to sacrifice for That's him? Right. Amen. And then um, the reason, one of the reasons he came was because they said, "Let us make man in our image." So part of his coming was this making of this creation that was going to yeah. show forth God. So that's what we're doing now too. So Amen. so we're entering into this purpose with him. We're actually showing Christ, showing God through our lives, and mm -hmm. we're demonstrating it to the angels, to people mm -hmm. and all. So we have to continue to remember that whenever Amen. we're thinking Amen. about the things that's mm -hmm. going on in our lives. So we're part of this purpose, this purpose yeah. of God. It's a marvelous see, thing. See, what God, what God said he was going to do for yeah. people mm -hmm. is confirmed when it's seen in you. Yeah. That's our role in the whole matter. Yes. Uh -huh. it, when living it out has to do with getting the obstacles out of the way. It's not... Like you map out, how am I going to do this? You get out everything that hinders it from being done, oh, see? Yes. And then, then you'll go to work. Amen. This, this, uh, this aspect of God's meekness, Christ came in meekness, yeah. and uh, he calls us to his own meekness. Huh? Yeah. You know, it's not that uh, <clears throat> to be contrite and humble attracts God because that's the way God is. Now, being meek doesn't have anything to do with power and strength and authority. It's just a, it's a disposition. Uh, and I, I can see that uh, Christ had this before he came. He yeah. was meek. That's why he, that's why he came. See, meekness, as I understand meekness, is harnessed to power. Like a, like a horse. It's hard. It's, the power is devoted to a, it's subdued and devoted to, so it, it took power for yeah. Jesus to lay down his life. Amen. That's right. It took power for, it would have taken power. He had the power to just decimate everything. That's right. But it, it, instead he harnessed his power, Amen. sheathed his sword. That's right. And what that involved, as you were just suggesting, what that involved mm -hmm. is beyond us. Yeah. This just reiterates something that the scripture has established right from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. That so far as the things created, 
go. God is is known as far as mankind specifically. Mm -hmm. God is known only through, by, and in the Son. That's right. That's right. Now, if you talk about the creation, where His power and Godhead has been demonstrated. Mm -hmm. Christ is the one that, that created it. We know those things, however limited. That it's like God was giving us ABCs for what He was going to say uh -huh. about this new demonstration of His person. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in Israel, it's like He's developing a vocabulary so we would understand like things like redemption mm -hmm. and salvation and protection and deliverance and all of these all of these things said uh, care you know what it means whenever God says these things so that whenever the word came we would understand the message yeah that uh -huh. he had to he had to build these other things that he was it was like I remember Brother Al said once creation is the mind of God in substance Revelation is the mind of God in word. Yeah, amen. Well, you won't amen. understand the words until you've got some substance to, to attach it to. But even, uh, that's something what Sister Ava said. But even, even the two times that we know of where God spoke, Jesus was on the earth and the voice was heard from heaven. It was still on account of the Son. We wouldn't know those things except for it was, Amen. It was for the Amen. Son. But it, it, there in the garden, when Jesus prayed, part of his prayer was that they all may be one, mm -hmm. as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee, mm -hmm. that they also may be one in us. Mm -hmm. And then again, he now he, he clarifies this a little bit more. I in them, yeah. yes. and thou in yes. me. Uh -huh. That's our oneness with the Father, Amen. is being in Amen. the Son. That's right. And if it is he that hath not the Son, hath not the, the Father. Father. That's right. So it's it, our, our initial and exclusive contact with the, with the Father is through the Son. Amen. Of course, he employs the Holy Spirit too, but, mm -hmm. but it's the Son is the foundation and the reason you take the sun out of it we've got no no access to the spirit of god or to the father yeah amen mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah, you know you used this word family earlier yeah. when you were talking you said the best way that that, that comes into play here that yes, he, it does. through christ now he brings us into the family, family. yeah that's right yes, that's that unity that's that you right were talking about. Amen. Yeah. I, I particularly like that yeah now this it sounds uh, good to me to illustrate this thing of creation acquainting us with the salvation of God. Now, so far as we know, immortal beings don't have to eat. Because uh -huh. yeah. the only purpose of eating is because to subdue decline. That's right. Yeah. So it's very, in heaven, as far as we know, as we think of eating, uh -huh. there's no need to eat. But in salvation, uh -huh. people are going to have to eat. Yes. And uh -huh. be sustained. So he, yes. in creation, he created life that uh -huh. was sustained by. Amen. Yes. Which perfectly depicts what salvation does. Amen. That's right. See. That's right. Anyway, it's a thing to yeah. thing to yeah. think yeah. about. <laughs> Even Adam and Eve had to eat. Right? They had to eat. Yeah. yeah. So far as we know, angels don't have to eat. Yeah. Uh -huh. Only only mortals have to eat. Mm -hmm. holds all things. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Yeah. Hey, you well, said, I don't need to eat that you know not of. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That word of prayer. Mm. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and for the word. And the more, Lord, we hear of it and the more we see it, the more satisfying and challenging it is. We thank you for so great a salvation. In Jesus' name, amen.